It was the event of the decade, and pilots had some of the best seats in the house. Some 220 airports were in the path of the eclipse totality. So if you had an airplane, you could get to the best spots on Earth to experience night in the middle of the day. Well, we have airplanes, so we spread out across the country to experience the eclipse with fellow aviators. I'm David Tulis at Madras, Oregon, where several thousand aviation enthusiasts and some of NASA's greatest minds gathered at what they call the solar port. We are at Madras Airport, and we're about to watch the solar eclipse. Candace Crandall flew down from Washington. It was an amazing flight, and we flew right by um, Mount Rainier. NASA also had a flight above the Pacific Northwest. We have a Gulf Stream 3 that's going to start our real-time NASA TV show. From the G3, NASA kicked off their coverage anchored in Madras. Other people used heavy iron to jet up from LA and the Bay Area the morning of. But most of the 500 plus aircraft were everyday people using GA to see something extraordinary. It was awesome. awesome. It was beautiful. David Tulis, AOPA Live. I'm Mike Collins in Montrose, Colorado, where I joined some STEMI motor gliders to view Monday's eclipse in flight. The goal for this flight was Rifle, Colorado, about 60 nautical miles north, where the eclipse would reach 90% totality. A bit of a departure delay and a climb to 12,500 feet, though, and the motor gliders didn't quite make it all the way to Rifle. I get started now. All oh, the colors are cool. Although we only made it to 90% totality, the eclipse was enough to kill the soaring lift for the middle part of the day. Mike Collins, AOPA Live. And I'm Warren Morningstar in Carpendale, Illinois, where the pilots flying in here at first worried a bit about the cumulus that we're building and were afraid that it was going to block out the sun. But we're just a few moments away from totality here and everyone is going to get a spectacular view. Some came in the night before in camp, but most arrived the morning of the eclipse. Big and small, a steady stream to the Southern Illinois airport and the airport was ready for them. They started planning months ago and had to turn away pilots. Uh, we surpassed 400 on the registration in just the past three weeks. And so we knew that um, we had to ramp up our expectations and our planning, and, uh, and we did that. They made it a free event. Free entrance, no parking or camping fees, no ramp fees, and free food. Instead, we knew we would make a little money on merchandise and fuel sales. We were happy with that. Happy Eclipse watchers flew in from all over the Midwest. Brazil, Indiana, Zero India 2. Just outside Chicago, Dyer, Indiana, India Golf, Quebec. I came from Rochester, Indiana. It came down, picked Jim up in Oxford, Ohio. Came down and picked up our friends in Bloomington, Indiana, and then got here about 9.30 local time. Part owner of an SR-20 based out of Champaign, Illinois, and it turned out that there were uh, six pilots and family members that wanted to come down, so we had to make one trip early this morning and then do a quick turnaround, go back to Champaign, and then all the rest of us came down, and now we're gonna reverse the process on the way home. They staked out their viewing areas. Now, this was not exactly my choice. And then the moment they were all waiting for. The heavy iron bailed as fast as they arrived, but most of the piston flyers stayed around a bit to savor the event. Hey, what do you think about being able to fly to something like this? I think it's great, especially because I have 10 hours as a student pilot. I, I like that we flew down here, and I got off school, so why not, right? <laughs> and those in Chicago probably didn't get a chance to see what we saw here in Carbondale. This was my first one, and it was kind of freaky. I couldn't stop staring at the solar corona and the planet Venus and the strange clouds on the horizon. It was certainly once-in-a-lifetime thing. It was, it was really fantastic. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. I'm Josh Cochran here at Triple Tree Aerodrome in South Carolina. Triple Tree is the perfect place for pilots who want to fly in and see the eclipse. And Triple Tree is welcoming these pilots with some good old southern hospitality. Turn right at Charlie, contact ground 123.9, welcome to Triple Tree. Triple Tree started welcoming campers on Sunday. The privately owned airport has a pristine 7,000 foot grass runway and beautiful facilities making it the ideal place to camp under the wing. 
Kirby Hornaday and Jeff Mueller flew in and camped under the wing of a yak. We're getting Incredible. married in less than two months, so <laughs> crammed into a tent where it's hot and <laughs> it's wow. testing, but it's awesome. <laughs> Noah Watts, a member of the Golden Knights U.S. Army parachute team, was also camping. He flew a Cessna 206 from Fayetteville, North Carolina to camp with friends. <laughs> It's, uh, it's nice to, to see a bunch of people come together for whatever the reason. Everyone comes out and flies and just has a good time. Lots of fellowship, especially here at Triple Tree. Dinner on Sunday night, a Triple Tree favorite. Steak night with a P-51 in the background and RC airplanes buzzing overhead. Monday morning brought a camping breakfast essential, bacon, and hundreds of arrivals into Triple Tree. Mike Price flew in for the day with his goddaughter, Zoe Greenhouse. Seeing all my pilot friends who I know will be here today, and uh, most importantly, to see the expression on her face when the total solar eclipse happens today. That's going to be special for us. Throughout the day, while they're waiting, onlookers were perfectly happy to relax under the wing and join the community and watching all kinds of airplanes arrive. As the eclipse began, excitement grew, and despite all the good food, people here must have been hungry. Well, it looks um, like a banana. I'm going to say a piece of cheese, actually, a nice sharp cheddar. Kind of looks like an orange slice that I bit out of, and now it's just smiling at me. And as totality was reached... It's amazing! Oh my gosh, like, so crazy. It's great, fantastic. What, a, what an experience. Never thought I'd see it. Look at the clip squeeze! <laughs> Gorgeous. Great. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Who would have ever thought? Beautiful. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, it's Good coming time. back. Yep. <laughs> oh, there it comes. What do you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> and just like that, it was over, and dozens of airplanes started heading home with the memories of this special time here at Triple Tree, a testament to the kinds of experiences that can only be had with general aviation. This event has been tro truly just a significant um, benchmark for many people, me especially. Thank y'all for coming. It was just the, the highlight, really, of a lot of our lives. Between the food and the people and the eclipse, of course, it's been a once-in-a-lifetime experience for a lot of the pilots here, thanks to all the work the Triple Tree has done. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. How cool is that? What a great use of an airplane. Uh, awesome. I love that we've pretty much spanned the, the, the entire we country. Did. People going out and just flying, enjoying the airplanes, taking advantage of what it is that general aviation can do. That, that was neat. Really fun.